What is the church? Is the church a building? Is the church a pastor? Or the staff? Is the church the music? The tradition? All the ministries? These are all good things, but they are not the church. Take them away, and the church is still here. Why? Because you are still here. The church is you. The church is you with a purpose. The church is you on a mission. To celebrate God at a service. To connect in a small group community. To commit using your gifts and passions and to claim your faith and proclaim to those who do not know Christ. When you and I live like this, all the things we used to do in church become things we do as the church. God desires it. The world needs it. And we are called to be it. What is the church? The church is you. Would you pray with me? Loving and gracious God, thank you for this gathering, your church, as we continue to embody the presence of the holy within us. Thank you for gathering us, for it is in the gathering that we inspire one another and are found in that inspiration by the will of your God, our God, this place. So open us, O God, that we might be mindful of all that you have called us to be, all that you are calling us to do, and all that you will reveal to us as we follow in the ways of Jesus. And through that inspiration, deepen that experience within our own lives now, O God, as we reflect on your word and make it real and relevant for this day, for this generation. And so now, God, we pray that in the opening of our hearts and our minds that we might hear that still, small voice that speaks within us. I pray that you would touch my lips of clay, mold them into the words that need to be spoken this day. And may the words that come from my mouth and the meditations on each and every one of our hearts, may they be found ever acceptable to you. In the name of Jesus the Christ, in whom we pray. Amen. So over these last few weeks, we've been thinking about what it means to be, go deeper into our own faith journey, to go deeper into our experience of Jesus in our own personal lives. And as a church, we have committed to being a church that wants to be all in, a church that wants to deepen that experience as a daily living experience, not just something that we navigate on a Sunday morning, but something that we make real in everyday living situations and everyday living experiences of the faithful of God. And over these last few weeks, we've been sharing about what that might mean for us as a people, what it might mean for us as Cathedral of Hope, what it might mean for us as the people of God, not just coming to church, but being the church, how we might explore together as well as individually our own discipleship path. We've said that in this year we want to reclaim two words that have been given a bad rap, perhaps by the Christian church, uh, discipleship and evangelism. And over this year we've been thinking and will be thinking more deeply about what it means to be a disciple of Jesus, what it means to be a follower of the way, the truth, and the life. And as a staff and as a congregation, we're inviting you on this journey to go deeper, to be all in through what we are calling the four C's. These four C's that might help us to think about our discipleship path, that might help us to think about ways in which we are perhaps need to take the next step in our journey and to be more invested in our spiritual journeys individually and as a church. And on that first Sunday in this month, we talked about the need for us as a people to touch base with our spiritual community. We call that worship. Worship is not just about great music and great preaching and great congregations. Worship is about that experience that we get to touch base, to reconnect, to come together as the body of Christ. 
what it means for us to come together and to be re-inspired, to be reignited, to find the passion that lives within us and within our own spiritual dimension of life. And worship becomes that important place for us, that touchstone, that place that we return to week in and week out. Yes, we shared, Lan, just those few weeks ago, the importance of starting our week with worship, starting our week by coming together as the body of Christ, coming together. There is so much in the distractions of the world that would tell us that we're not good enough, that we're not worthy, that we're not loved, and how important it is for us to come back together and to be reminded once again that we are worthy, that we are loved, and that God has a purpose for each and every one of us. We talked about how habits get to be formed and how sometimes we can break those habits. Sometimes we break good habits. And I think that so often in our world today, especially in America, we've broken the habit of coming together in worship together on a weekly basis. So many people now believe that regular attendance as a church is, is once every six weeks. Once every six weeks to reconnect with God's people. I, I don't know about you, but I would be finding myself severely lacking if I was not in worship on a Sunday morning, if I was not together with the body of Christ. You can say amen. amen. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm glad that you're still out there with me. <laughs> Coming together. I thought for a moment, for coming together as that body of Christ. And, and me for worship is not just standing up and preaching. You know, even when I'm on vacation, when I get to go on vacation, I still find a worshiping community that I can gather together with, a place where I can be found with the people of God. Worship, coming together to celebrate one another's lives. It never fails to amaze me when I see folks on Sunday mornings, the opportunities that we get to check in with each other and to find out how life is doing and to find out how we might be able to support one another. You know, when you don't do that on a weekly basis, you can so often quickly forget what's going on in people's lives. And it's not for gossip reasons. It's not so that we can have something juicy to post on Facebook as soon as we leave the building. This is about a genuine concern and a genuine love for one another. Jesus said, love one another as I have loved you. And we can't do that through Facebook. We can't do that through, through our social media. We, we do that most effectively when we're together as the body of Christ, celebrating one another and celebrating our lives in relationship with God. So coming together as the body of Christ, worshiping, celebrating, finding that sacred space, that sacred place within us that we might be encouraged to go back out into the world and to live what we believe. We can't do that so often in other places. We need to do that in this physical place, this place that we call church, the building that houses each and every one of us and that we have invested ourselves in. Last week, we talked about how we must connect with one another and how sometimes the, the church in all of its busyness on a Sunday morning is a difficult place for us to connect, especially to be able to, to speak to one another about the very personal issues that are going on, or perhaps even just to share with one another about our own faith journeys. So often when we're arriving on a Sunday and having to leave because there's another congregation coming in, it's hard to make those deep connections with one another in those few moments that we get to gather. And so we talked about how perhaps the next part of our discipleship journey, if worship is the first place that we start, perhaps the next step of our own discipleship path is to connect with one another, to connect in a small group, to connect in what Cathedral of Hope has called over the, over the many, many years those uh, traditional circles that we have gathered together in. And we shared last week that part of what we want to do as a staff and hopefully as a congregation is to facilitate those deep connections with one another is to reinvest in our small groups here at Cathedral of Hope. And we're re reigniting those small groups, especially in Lent. Reverend Michael spoke very passionately during the announcement time of the need for those hosts and for those leaders to come together who will help individuals gather together in those small groups of 12 or 15 people. And I look out this morning and I see people who have been invested in the circle or in a small group for many, many years and have shared with me the value of those small groups here at Cathedral of Hope. Couples and legacy and celebration circles, all of the many groups that gather together in those small, informal, but formal ways to check in with each other, to pray with one another. 
and to know things about our lives that only that small group knows, to gather together in the connections that we need to have with one another, that it will share with one another in the good times and in the not-so-good times, to read a book together, to go into Bible study together, and to share our theology together. Theology is not just something that comes from the preacher on a Sunday morning. Theology is lived out in the embodiment of God's people. It is that God that is still speaking, that Holy Spirit that is still stirring us up. And so often I think good theology comes from the people more often than from the preacher. A theology of our lives, a theology of our journey, a theology that we get to share with one another so that when one is suffering, there is others who will come alongside and lift us up. And when we are the person who can lift somebody else up, come alongside someone else who is suffering those small groups, and we gather together on a weekly basis. And I sincerely hope that you will be thinking about your next step in your own discipleship path and perhaps take Lent as an opportunity to really invest yourself in this study, this small group experience, just to try it out. Uh, there was a, a great uh, a thought that was uh, shared about two years ago when people were uh, thinking about how we might try something on. It's like a, a new pair of shoes. Anyone's ever worn a new pair of shoes, you know that you've got to try them on for a few weeks before they actually start to get comfortable in our lives. Yes? Oh, phew, I'm just wondering where you are this morning. <laughs> You have to try some things on. And my hope is that you might try on something this season of Lent and to try on one of these small group experiences and just to see how they might feel for you and perhaps even then to make that a part of your own discipleship path, investing yourself in God and God investing in you. This week we move in our discipleship path, our discipleship journey to think about the third C, commit. Now that's a word that we don't like to use. Some people say well, that's a, a new swear word on the block. We, we don't like to commit to things. In fact, uh, people who tell me about Generation um, X, I think that's the, or the millennials, the millennials, um, I'm told, and I don't, I don't like generalizations about any types of groups of people, but uh, I'm told that millennials don't like to commit. Well, they certainly don't like to commit to something long term. They, they don't mind committing to something for a few weeks, but committing to something, I'm looking over at my millennials this morning and uh, wondering if uh, I'm on the right track. But you know, so, so often, but, you know, sorry, Erin, I just look over this way for a second. <laughs> Never ask a lady her age. <laughs> that, that, that sense of, 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 of wanting to commit. We, we, we don't like to commit these days. But the truth of the matter is that the gospel of Jesus calls for us to commit. It calls for us to commit to our own journey. It calls for us to commit to something that is bigger than ourselves, something that is beyond ourselves. I think of our gospel reading this morning, and uh, it's, it's, I, I love the way that you can read gospel stories and, and see something different in them each time. You know, this was the gospel reading that I, I used on my, uh, my first sermon here at Cathedral of Hope. It was, the, it was my candidate weekend, and I, I remember talking about the fishermen and, uh, and how those fishermen were out in the, uh, the seas and how they were fishing on one side, and the, the commandment came to fish on the other side. And I said to Cathedral of Hope nearly four years ago now, are we ready to fish on the other side of the boat? Are we ready to fish on the other side of the boat? I love the way I can still remember what I said four years ago. <laughs> This passage comes in a very similar context, but the, the Scripture that I read this morning and that I see in this Gospel reading was the invitation of Jesus to, to, to pack everything up and to follow Jesus. There was a commitment that was asked of those disciples that was perhaps any commitment that any one of us has asked. They had to leave their jobs and leave their nets and leave the familiarity of their own lives in order to follow Jesus. Jesus asked that level of commitment from us to, to, to follow wherever God might lead us, and to commit in such a way that it takes an extraordinary experience, not just that ordinary, not just that cultural experience where we're not sure we want to commit to things, 
Jesus invites us to that extraordinary level of our lives, that we might be willing to leave everything behind, to leave the familiarity of where we've been, or to leave behind those seven last dying words of the church, we've never done it that way before to leave those things behind in the nets on the shore and to follow Jesus, to invest in our spiritual journeys. Not to invest in, in being the church, but to invest in our own spiritual journey. If we truly believe that God has invested in us, well, how much more would we want to invest in what God has given us? to leave behind those things and to follow Jesus, to commit in our time and in our talent and in our treasure, to commit all of us. That's what all in is all about, is to invest everything about us. I've used this analogy before, you, the okey-cokey, where you put your whole self in and your whole self out. And I'm always being a little bit da dangerous sometimes when I use this because th then I always get these little gifts that, that just show up. I've, I've got several up on my desk, one that says, what if the hokey pokey is what it's all about? <laughs> that sense of being all in, that sense of investing ourselves, putting our whole selves in and not taking our whole selves out but investing ourselves in our time, our talent, and our treasure. The writer to the early church knew what that was all about when he talked to those early followers of Jesus about how each of us is with a purpose. Each of us has been given a gift. Each of us has something to offer. And each of us has that ability to make a difference in the world. You see, that's really what it means to be all in. That's really what it means to commit, is to know that our acts of grace and love, our acts of kindness, our acts of generosity make a difference. There is an impact that those gifts offer to the world. And those impact gifts, those impacts on others make a difference for themselves and knowing that when they are making a difference for someone else, they're also making a difference for ourselves. The commitment of our lives, the commitment to follow Jesus, the commitment to leave behind the nets to follow Jesus, the commitment to a small group, the commitment to giving of ourselves in all of the various ministries and programs that are part of the church and beyond the church. Just over a year ago, we invested as a congregation in, in building a new 501c3 called Dallas Hope Charities. And the investment we made in Dallas Hope Charities was so that we could go beyond just the traditional things that we've done as a church and to find ways in which we might increase our territory, increase the ways in which we make a difference in the world. And through Dallas Hope Charities, which is the outreach arm of Cathedral of Hope, it's still Cathedral of Hope. It's just a separate 501c3 where we can raise money from foundations. But through the work that we do, through the work that we gather, we have found ourselves, thank you for the amen, we have found ourselves, we have found ourselves making an even bigger difference through our acts of service. For those who will show up on Saturday morning and for Monday, for those who will ensure that those who are homeless on Wednesdays have a blessing bag, for, for those who will step out into the new shelter that we've opened for transitional housing for LGBT youth, for the many ways in which we are able to make a difference. We can't do that difference just from the resources of our congregation. We, we do that because there is another way of bringing together people so that they might also live out their purpose, living out of their time, their talent, their treasure, giving of themselves more fully, giving of themselves on a Sunday morning as our Elmos sit on these front rows offering themselves in service giving of themselves and ushers and technical folks and fellowship and hospitality and greeters and orchestra and choir and, and just the so many ways that we offer ourselves, even just the gift of presence. Do you know that just by being here this morning, forget all the folks that are on the front rows and those of us who are up here and over here and over up there, but just the ordinary folk in the pew are giving the gift of presence. And they're allowing their gift just by being here this morning, giving of themselves to the fullness so that someone else 
someone else might be able to see themselves in us and say, you know, if they can believe, if they can give God a second chance, third chance, fourth chance, if God can give me a third, fourth, fifth chance, then this is a God that's worth following. This is a God who is worth finding my presence with, celebrating our worship, connecting with each other as siblings in Christ, committing of our lives is all part of this discipleship path that encourages us to always look within and to ask ourselves, is there yet more to come? Is there yet more for me to be? And by the offering of our time, our talent, and our treasure, know that we do that not to bolster Cathedral of Hope's name, but to give the glory of God away, to give it to someone else, to allow someone else to find the difference that God can make in their life. I want to close my sermon with a, a quote, and um, you know, I, I'm an extemporaneous preacher, and so when it comes to quotes, I have to write them down because I want to get them right. So uh, bear with me as I just journey over this way to pick up my bulletin <laughs> and find a net and bring it back over here. This was shared on Facebook yesterday. Tim Reed wrote it. He said this, they're going to beat me for saying this, but it's been on my mind all day. I want to give a special shout out to Michael Fuller and Steve Miller, two of our bark angels. This morning we had a problem with our syrup order and only half a bottle to serve 200 plus people. That, that's not a lot of syrup. <laughs> Just ask my daughter. He, he didn't write that bit, sorry. <laughs> I reached out to Steve Miller and asked him to pick some up on the way in, as I can count on these two every Saturday as regular volunteers. They hit, I can't say the store because that's advertising, but they hit the store and came in with five gallons of the best they had to offer, Miss Butterworth's. <laughs> I asked Steve Miller for his receipt so I could get him reimbursed appropriately, and his response? Why can't it just be a donation? Yes, tears were flowing. Who is peeling onions? This coming from a man who battled cancer last year and won. This one who shows up whenever needed and an amazing spirit. This couple who single-handedly negotiated with the local Sonic to provide and donate our guest ice every Saturday morning and who personally delivers it. I love you guys. I just think angels should be recognized every once in a while. Now I'm going to get into trouble. Oh well, love you, Steve Miller and Michael Fuller. commit, the giving of our time, our talent, and our treasure. Will you go further with me, Cathedral of Hope, United Church of Christ. Amen.